Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to share with you a few ways on how you can stay focused on your vision and accomplish your goals. Now, if this is something for you, I think you should continue watching. In the world that we live in, it is so easy to get distracted and lose sight of the very things that we want out of life. And not only that, there is a real devil who wants nothing more than to see us fail. And the thing is that, you know, there's a lot of reasons why people struggle in going forth in their calling and the purpose that God has placed over them. It could be a variety of things. It can be, you know, lack of resources, lack of finances, no place, you know, or just no support system or just simply no vision. And I was talking to a friend the other day and he had asked, you know, how did you make it? How did you stay focused on your goals? How did you accomplish the things that God has placed within you? And some of the tips and strategies I did share with him. And later on, you know, he reported back to me and he stated that it has really been helping. So I said, why not? Let me spread the wealth of knowledge and share with somebody else. And maybe this might help you to continue going forth in your purpose. So how did I make it here today? You know, now being 26, going into my third year as a psychologist, I look young. <laughs> and, you know, just being able to start my own ministry and, you know, just finding so much joy and so much peace in this season of my life. It was a struggle in the beginning, but it was all God. So the first thing that I did to help me stay focused on the vision and just the goals that I wanted out of life was doing inventory. And inventory just really means you need to see who you are hanging around. The word of God says that bad company corrupts good character. So whoever you hang around, you end up becoming. And many times, even though you know they say they're your friends or they're your family, Many times they don't have the best interest at heart for you and they don't have to be malice people at all. They can be, you know, good hearted people. However, they're not building you. Instead, many times they're taking from you. They're depleting you. They're just causing you to grow weary. They're not pushing you and motivating you to go forward in your calling and in your dreams. And that's why you just have to be really careful of who you surround yourself with. And a lot of the times, you know, when you're doing inventory, you just have to check. You know, do the people that you hang around, do they have the same mentality as you? Are they trying to make something out of themselves? Are they trying to move away from, you know, the the lifestyle that they grew up in or even the lifestyle that they're currently in? Are they trying to elevate? Are they trying to, you know, make a legacy and plant a seed for the next generation? Are the people that you're hanging around encouraging you or are they discouraging you? Are they supporting you or are they not supporting you? Are they being selfish or are they being selfless? What I would say, you know, after you do inventory and you realize that there's just certain people you know, they're, they're not really good for where you want to go in life. I'm not saying go ghost on them completely, but, you know, just be mindful of the amount of time you spend with them. And you know what I always like to do? Because sometimes you just don't want to go ghost on people completely. So what I like to do is, you know, I like to pray and, you know, just tell God, especially if I am going to hang out with them, God, take complete control of the conversation. Allow your words to be spoken. If it's not of you, don't let it come to pass. Don't let it come out of either one of our mouth, whoever you're hanging out with. And that's by praying that, you know, it just allows you to be mindful of the things that you're saying. Because again, not everybody is here to support you. And many times when you're talking about, you know, your calling and the dreams that you have over your life, many times people, people shame you for it or they make you feel embarrassed or just, they just discourage you and you don't want that at all and even the word of god states in proverbs i have the scripture here whoever keeps company with the wise becomes wise but the company of fools suffer harm so even god himself is telling you to be careful of the company that you keep number two the second way that you can stay focused on your vision and accomplish your goals is having an accountability partner. I am a strong advocate 
advocate for having an accountability partner. You cannot do this life alone. And you know, having that accountability partner, I strongly encourage, as I always will, is to have an accountability partner of someone who is the same sex. Age doesn't matter, but you know, someone with a lot of wisdom, because just because you're older does not mean you're wiser. So, you know, just someone with a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge, someone who is as the same sex as you, because usually when you have the same sex accountability partner, that will help you to stay focused. I promise you. I mean, if you have someone of the opposite sex, I'm not discouraging you. If it's helping you, continue doing it. But if you're someone like me who really, really, really just wants to stay focused, no distractions, especially if you're like me and you've never had that boyfriend or you never had that girlfriend and you never dated. And many times when you connect with the opposite sex on an emotional level, feelings get involved people who you never thought were attractive become attractive to you so that is why i encourage my personal opinion and you don't have to agree i just encourage you to get an accountability partner of the same sex but regardless of who your accountability partner is it's good to have one where you know you can go to that person and share your vision and share your goals and it's because it's not everybody you can talk to but just having that one person is awesome because they can hold you accountable they can check up on you to make sure you're doing what you said you were going to do if you were going to apply for that job if you were going to apply for that apartment that house that car that college or you know go back whatever it is go back to school whatever it is having that accountability partner can encourage you when you get discouraged a good accountability partner is someone that you can be vulnerable with someone that you're not afraid to you know cry in front of someone you don't feel any shame and embarrassment with someone that won't judge you for the things that you have done in the past or the things that you are currently doing or may do in the future you know i have an accountability partner and let me tell you i am far from perfect i have done things that i know i was not supposed to do said things that i know i was not supposed to say and you know what i love about my accountability partner she she prays for me <laughs> she prays for me she prays with me for me even when i'm not in her presence even when i'm about to do something that that can potentially take me out of my destiny and my calling. She won't, you know, she'll try to put me back on the right path, but she knows that I'm an adult and I'm grown. So what she really does is say, you know what, do what you want to do, but I'm going to just pray for you. And that prayer helps because with that prayer, the Holy Spirit just intervenes. So I strongly encourage you, have that accountability partner. And if you don't have one, and if you don't know of any one that you know that can be deemed that accountability partner i suggest praying about it and asking god to bring someone into your life that can help you so that you can continue accomplishing your vision and your goals and even with that accountability partner you know you and the person can sit down and you can write out all of your goals write out all of your visions and let that accountability partner hold on to it so that he or she can hold you to it but number three the third way to stay focused on your vision and accomplish your goals is having a vision board. You have heard about this, I'm pretty sure. So this is nothing new. I like to have a vision board. I like to start it around December. I'm, I'm gonna show you mine. It's, it's a lot going on. Mine is not fancy. Let me show you. It's a regular board and let me stand up. It's a regular board and it just has insects cards. It's really big, it's really huge. It just has index cards and it's a lot, right? So with my board, I don't get fancy with it. You know, when you look on YouTube and you talk about how to start a vision board, people are cutting out magazines, printing out pictures, doing fancy letters. Your girl don't got time for that. I'm more about what's on the paper than me trying to get fancy with the board. And what I do, this is just a regular board. Um, I got it at a thrift store, but you can get it anywhere. You can even order it on Amazon, a regular board. And, you know, some index cards. 
and start writing. And having a vision board, I normally keep this board by my bed so that when I go to bed at night, when I wake up in the morning, that's one of the first things I see before I close my eyes and the first thing I see when I wake up because it allows me to see, okay, this is what I'm working towards today. Even if I don't see it, even if I don't feel it, even if I don't believe it, I've read it and it's gonna stick with me. And having that vision board, you know, they always say you have one every year, but you can start now. We're midway through the year. And the, I don't know about you, but the God that I serve, he can do miracles at any time, any given day. God is not a God of timelines. So even if you did not create one, I suggest you starting it right now after this video. And what I like to do with my um, vision board, I'm going to show you again. With my vision board, I like to have categories. So with my cat, this is really heavy. With the categories, you know, I have finances, um, personal, blog, um, what is this, Pinterest, the area of relationships, and I don't know what that last one is. Let me see, I can't see. Oh, job, my current job. It looks like a lot of writing, but my, I keep it very simple and as specific as possible, and I'll get into that. And let me tell you something, what was really funny. You know what? Let, yeah, let me share it with you. I was going to wait, but let me share it with you. So in the area of relationships, right? I wrote down, I did this December of last year. In the area of relationships, I wrote for God to open up the door in the area of relationships and, you know, all of that extra stuff. And midway through this year, so around March, April, I changed it. I didn't rip it up. I changed it and I just put for God to help me find peace in my season of singleness, to enjoy it and teach me how to date myself. That is the card that I put for the area of relationships. And little by little, God is, he's doing his thing in my life. So get that vision board, get some index cards. Even if you don't have a board like this, I know the dollar store has those post, those big poster boards. Get you a few index cards, make some categories. If you can get colored index, whether it's, you know, some categories that I think of is like relationships, finances, you know, your current job, future job, or just broadly speaking, career goals, personal and business, those categories. And I have all of this written down on my blog, on my website, singlechronicle7.com. The link is below. And it'll give you a little bit more in depth on how you can create a vision board. But having one, it, I strongly encourage you to have a vision board. Because when you put it down on paper, the word of God says to write your vision and make it plain. And when you write it down, you're putting it into the atmosphere. Like, this is what I'm going to accomplish. We're halfway through the year. And you have so much time to start something or to get something done. So don't be discouraged if you never even thought of a vision board, get started right away, okay? And the last way to stay focused on your vision and accomplish your goals is staying connected to God. Without God, we are nothing. And with God, we are so much better. You know, God, he will supply all of your needs according to his riches and his glory. He's got you. When you continue seeking him first, everything else would be added on to him. And, you know, what I love about God is that he's always there. Even when, you know, I don't have that accountability partner. We live in two different states now, so um, I can't go over her house like I used to every week. You know, now it's every once in a while when um, I'm in her state. So, and you know, it was hard at first, but then it taught me, you know, you can't, you can't rely on people, not because they're bad, but because, you know, man is temporary, you know, but with God, God is forever. He's an eternal. So no matter where you move to, no matter where you go to, God is with you. And with God, you know, he can do what no man can do. Yes, friends can encourage you and be there for you. But God, he's the only one that can truly push you because he knows your heart. 
Yes, your friends and your family know your heart, but God truly knows your heart. He knows that you're struggling right now, but he knows that you want it. He knows that you have a vision for it. He knows that you have a goal for it. So I suggest you stay, con stay connected to God. And with God, he will give you so much joy and so much peace and so, so much contentment that even if you're not where you want to be in this season of your life, he can, he can wash that all over you and allow you to enjoy the very moment as you continue walking forward into your calling. The reason why I encourage you to invite God into, you know, your goal setting, your vision setting is because God is the only one that can give you favor. He's the only one that can open doors that no man can shut. He's the only one that can make the impossible possible, even if you're not qualified, even if, you know, you don't have the background for it. God will open that door for you. And God... Every time I talk about God, it's either I smile or I get emotional because God is just so good. When you have gone through things, you know, and I got to stop talking about God because one or two, I'm going to keep smiling, but then I feel the tears coming because God is just so good. He is so good, so good, so good. And I will not stop saying it. And that's why I say stay connected to God. Get in his presence. Even if you don't have a vision and you don't know what you want out of this life, even if you don't know what your purpose is in this life, get connected to God. The way that I found my purpose was through healing. I needed to heal first. And by healing, it allowed me to look at life from a whole different perspective. This smile and this glow and all of that, this was not automatic. It took... It took years to get to this point. It took a lot of God's touch to get to this point where I can walk in all that, you know, God has created me to be. So don't leave God out of this. Invite him into this area of your life. When it comes to your future, he knows your end from your beginning. He knows every specific detail of your life. He knows when things are going to happen. With God, it is not coincidence. It is not chance. It's by divine miracle so stay connected to him so those are my few strategies on how i was able to stay focused on my vision and accomplish my goals as you saw with my vision board i still have a lot that you know i want god to do in my life before this year is over i what i do after i create the vision board i pray over it and i fast over it i give it to god and i say god let your will be done and you know what more than half of this board, and it was a lot of stuff on this index, on these index cards, more than half of this board came to pass. More than, that's why I say God is so good. Get in his presence, write your vision, make it plain, find an accountability partner. If you don't have one, ask God for one. Check your circles because not everybody that's for you is really for you. A lot of people are jealous. A lot of people are intimidated. They will never tell you to your face. But when you stay connected to God, God will show you their hearts. He will tell you, mm, you need to limit your time with them, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this little video today. If you have any other ways on how you stay accomplished, and you just stay focused and you get done what you need to done, comment below so that I can add it in to my little plans for next year. And even for now, I'm excited. I hope you're excited for what God is about to do in your life. As always, I just want you to stay encouraged, be encouraged. I'll see you in my next video. Until then, be blessed. Bye.